Beyond the lights of Sin City lies the weirdest, wildest West. From sagebrush saloons, historic mining towns, world-famous monsters, endless mountain ranges and singing sand dunes, to miles of scenic byways and their roadside pit stops, sometimes it's worth it to take the road less traveled. Over the next four days, I'll be riding 1,500 miles around the Silver State and uncovering what may just be the most underrated state I've ever visited. Welcome to Nevada. Good morning from Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, we are here at Red Rock Harley Davidson starting our four day trip through the Silver State. I'm really excited. I've never really gotten to ride here before. Um, of course, I'm on a Pan America once again and I'm bringing a couple friends with me on this trip. Uh, Kristen and Brandy. Kristen, who you've seen on this channel before, uh, I did a video with her in Florida. We've ridden to Sturgis together and our friend Brandy as well, who I've also ridden to Sturgis with, but she's never been in a video. So it'll be fun to get to ride with her. They're doing a little photo shoot behind me right now. <laughs> now I am very excited because we are all going to be on Harley Davidson Pan America 1250 specials courtesy of Eagle Rider Rentals. The location here in Las Vegas is one of the only ones in the country that allows you to rent the Pan Americas. The Dean Martin Eagle Rider location is really, really cool. Uh, I've never been to an Eagle Rider that is a standalone that's not attached to a dealership. If you fly in and forget anything, gloves, rain gear, riding gear of any kind, they have all of it there. There's also like a coffee bar inside. Um, it was a really cool setup. Uh, more info, by the way, on Eagle Rider, and I also have discount codes for them. Check the description below, and I'll try and put a link up here as well for that. So we decided to go ahead and meet up here at Red Rock Harley Davidson. One, because Brandy works here, so it was really easy to make this a meeting spot. Two, because this is actually a really cool dealership. They have like a little Evil Knievel exhibit inside. There's also a bunch of flat track race bikes and like a mini museum at the very back of the dealership. If you're not from the US, um, just know that every Harley Davidson dealer in the country kind of has its own flair to it. And it's cool to see like some old historical things inside this one as well. Y'all know I love history, so it fits perfectly with what I do on this channel. So we decided to pick the Eagle Rider bikes up yesterday uh, afternoon just because it would be easier for us to get on the road early this morning and we wanted to beat the heat out of Vegas. I think it's time for us to get these bikes packed up and hit the road. Today, we'll be riding roughly 400 miles along the Great Basin Highway. From the sprawling Desert Valley metropolis of Las Vegas to small but historic mountain towns with vibrant history and scenic views, there's plenty of things to see but only so much time to get there. Where are you gonna rate that one? This is the flame and hot. You don't get the hot till the end. Yeah, you have to like sit there for a bit. Yeah, side five. <laughs> Good collab. I'm gonna go with the four. Cheese! I don't know, the cheese dogness. It's almost like a hot dog. It's a cheese. <laughs> One hundred eighty miles from Las Vegas, our first stop of the trip is the historic, murderous mining town of Pioche. In the 1860s, silver ore was discovered in the area, and Pioche soon became a booming mining town, with 6,000 people moving here in less than three years. Despite its thriving mining economy, by the 1870s, Pioche accounted for 60% of all homicides reported in Nevada. Pioche was so ruthless in its heyday that 72 people died of murder before a single person died of natural causes in the town. While violent gunslingers may have made the town famous, today there's only one gunslinger we'll be visiting with, and it's a locally owned ice cream shop and eatery. We're officially about halfway up the Great Basin Highway. Wow, 
That was so much prettier than I was anticipating. When you're looking at it on a map, all you see is these straight roadways and you don't know what you're gonna get yourself into. And you're just in this valley surrounded by all these mountains. You go over a couple mountain passes and it's just gorgeous. This is definitely a really beautiful ride. I'm excited to see what we have in store for the rest of the day. But we couldn't go any further without stopping for some snacks. So I had to get myself a root beer float and we're getting lunch here at Gunslingers in Pioche, Nevada. This is a really historical little town, um, old mining town essentially. And this building that we're in currently was built in like 1892, which is wild. <laughs> This is like the perfect little lunch stop. The hoagie's perfect, the sausage is perfect, the onions are perfect, the sauce is perfect. Good choice. So Brandy comes up here fairly often. She's really familiar with this area and this was actually her stop of choice and it was a good one. <laughs> this is, you know your spot, so I really like this. I and love she, food. <laughs> It's a, she also knows a little bit about the town. Unfortunately, we don't have time to check out everything here today, but go ahead and tell them kind of some things to see here and why it's worth, you know, stopping in Pioche just beyond, you know, getting lunch. Beyond getting lunch, there's a really rad cemetery that we're not gonna be able to stop at, but it's right down the road called Boot Hill Cemetery. So that's something really rad to check out. Also, there's the most expensive courthouse in Nevada here in Pioche. So it's called uh, the Million Dollar Courthouse. So those are two of my cool. favorite things. Cool. Yeah, I think both. I wish we could stop and see all those things. Just see lots of old school kind of mining town stuff over the next couple days. But so many things, so little time. So many things. <laughs> There's a really rad hotel here called the Overlander also. So if you want to spend cool. the night, um, it's a hotel and saloon. So check that out. Yeah. And you and can then... actually see it right here. It's just up the hill there. We'll definitely have to come back here next time I'm in town. And this little spot, Gunslingers, closes for the winter because we are up in elevation, so they do get snow here. Um, it's so funny because like when you think Nevada, you don't think snow, but the state does get a ton of snow. A lot of the state's actually well, well above sea level. So <laughs> I was like, what's the word I'm looking for? But we've got about 120 miles for our next stop, so we're going to get back on the road. I want to say Nevada has more mountain peaks than any other state. I think I think that's a fact. Oh wow! Yeah, fun yeah. yeah. That yeah. Makes that's sense because we're surrounded in the valley. We're surrounded in Vegas by mountains. Yeah, and yeah. people don't think of that. Like people think like maybe <laughs> Salt Lake City. You know, that's a mountain town or whatever. But yeah. Vegas is actually yeah, it's surrounded by so many mountains. You can yeah. go. 30 minutes up northwest and be in a place that looks like Colorado. It's insane. Okay, maybe not mountain peaks, but Nevada is the most mountainous state in the United States. Nevada has more than 300 named mountain ranges, all of which run north to south as part of the Great Basin Complex. The state has the most number of peaks above 10,000 feet. Turns out, Nevada is a lot less flat than most people realize and seeing panoramic views from a motorcycle just might be the best way to really grasp how mountainous and beautiful the state really is. And speaking of Great Basins and mountains and motorcycles, no trip along the Great Basin Highway would be complete without a stop to this national park. It's a video. Oh, Unlike most national parks, Great Basin is free to enter. And depending on when you visit, it's worth taking a ride up Wheeler Peak Scenic Drive. In just 12 miles, you'll climb 4,000 feet in elevation and be greeted with views of Nevada's second highest mountain in the state, Wheeler Peak. So other than just driving up the scenic byway, like I said, even if you get halfway up it, it's definitely worth it. Um, there are some other cool things to see. Kristen and Brandy have been here before and they were telling me that as you go up, there's like little lakes on the sides of the road and like there's some really old trees here. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Great Basin National Park actually is home to some of the oldest living non-clonal organisms in planet Earth. Um, they're the cool. oldest trees, about 1,000 to 5,000 years old in range, what? which is pretty crazy. That's so cool. yeah, we're living in some history here. 
Um, beyond so cool. that, there's the Lehman Caves. That's a great cave system. You do have to make reservations if you yeah. do want to come before 1 p.m. And it's like a two week in advance minimum. Yeah. So keep that in mind yeah, as well. Yeah, definitely worth it. Um, and then they have lower and upper Lehman, Lehman campgrounds. And those are really cool to check out. You can actually sleep by some babbling brooks. Um, <laughs> and then... Lots of wildlife. Yeah, there's so much. Wildlife, yeah. scenic overlooks. There's a scenic drive that you can go on. Yeah, Sometimes, which, is what, which is what we're on right now. Yeah, yeah, half of it is under snow right now, and it's even, it's the middle of summer. But later on in the summer, you can get a whole scenic drive in, and it is just incredible. So, yeah, yeah. definitely plan your stay in advance um, to when the weather is a little bit nicer. Yeah, mm -hmm. but even if you're just popping through right now, I mean, the weather's so amazing yeah. for middle of May. What is today, May 22nd? Yeah. Tight, I got it right. I never get the day <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, the weather's awesome. We're at like 9,500 feet right now, and I guess it feels like it's 60. I don't know, but it's not bad. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's really cool. The yeah, sun's so. super warm up here. Yeah. yeah. And speaking of sun, I wish we could hang out longer, but we got to chase the sun yep. to start our next scenic byway. Let's so do we'll it. see you there. <laughs> In July of 1986, Life magazine dubbed Nevada's Highway 50 the loneliest road in America. The article claimed there were no points of interest along the route. With an epic sunset to start our journey down the loneliest highway, I'd say we're already debunking that claim, and we're not even at our first destination yet. So it was a little busy in there. So we decided we were gonna enjoy our food while it was warm and talk about it later. Uh, but you basically get to eat all of your meals like inside a little pretend jail cell. And this is the jailhouse casino motel as well. So you can stay here, which is what we're doing tonight. So parked the bikes, checked into the room, and then immediately went to dinner, which was like the perfect scenario. And all the food was so good, especially after doing like a 400 mile day today. That was like the perfect way to end the day. But on that note, we will see you tomorrow, and we'll be riding the rest, or at least most of, the Loneliest Highway. Good morning. We enjoyed some wide open brew coffee this morning here in the hotel room, and we are packing up and getting ready to ride the Loneliest Highway again today. challenge I want to say is what it's called but they end up closing down part of the Great Basin Highway I believe and for 60 miles these guys road race and it's kind of technically you can look it up I'll put a link up here for y'all uh, but it was that was a cool surprise to see all these cool cars in town today um, they do have a car show here in Ely today and then tomorrow they race so we've been kind of just checking things out here on the main street before we hit the road uh, but there's one thing that we need to do and that's get Brandy a passport stamp <laughs> We have to stamp here. Thank you so much. You know, you, can, you only need five stamps all together. <laughs> so, this is Jen here at Hotel Nevada in Ely, and she was just telling us that within this little survival guide, you only need 
five stamps total to get your pin and what else was it? You get a little certificate that tells you that you survived the loneliest highway in America. So that's pretty cool. If you like little, little trinkets, definitely pick one of these up and collect the stamps. <laughs> Kind of a cool part about Highway 50 uh, is it's also part of the Lincoln Highway. And there is an old marker right here for it. <laughs> Ely marks the intersection of the Lincoln Highway and what would eventually become US Highway 50. The Lincoln Highway, the first fully paved transcontinental highway in the United States, spanned more than 3,000 miles from New York City to San Francisco, California. At one point, 3,000 of these markers lined the entirety of the Lincoln Highway. However, most of the markers have been lost to history, vandalism, or road construction. And before there were automobiles, the route was part of the short-lived Pony Express, a mail route that used horses to carry mail across the country in roughly 10 days. However, after 18 months, it was disbanded. Throughout the loneliest highway, many remnants of the past still exist. From Pony Express station sites to Lincoln Highway markers to well-preserved archaeological sites and mining towns, there is plenty to see along Highway 50, regardless of the claim that Life magazine published all those years ago. Making our way downtown, riding fast, <laughs> faces pass, and I'm Tahoe bound. <laughs> For those willing to take the road even less traveled, there's also plenty to enjoy on Nevada's 48 million acres of public land, like the hot springs that are quite prominent throughout central Nevada. 63% of the state is managed by the Bureau of Land Management, more than any other state. And to toot its horn even further, Nevada has more natural hot springs than any other state. Nice and warm. Look at that view. What did you think of this place? Oh, I love it. I love that there's a whole shindig set up. But yeah, that was a surprise. We were yeah. like, we're going to have this hot spring to ourselves. Uh, we're, we're late to the party. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They... There's a lot of really cool people out here already enjoying it for the weekend. And uh -huh. they said that they're like from Reno, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Reno. And so, yeah, they just, they said they come out here. It's, you know, a handful of hours from home and they just all hang out for the weekend and Check yeah. out the stars at night. It, there's nothing out here, so you can see the stars really, really well. And I guess last night was a new moon, so it was just a spectacular show. So, yeah. hot springs, stars. Yeah. I mean, good people. Yeah, what more can you ask for? <laughs> exactly. Love it. Super cool. <laughs> saw the most amazing thing of my entire trip well I can't say that yet um, it's not over but I saw two wild horses up on two legs fighting each other or playing with each other and I absolutely loved it definitely a highlight of my day now time to go get my staff <laughs> you are just out there in the wide open range there's not many cars at all no not many cars at all. And then you've got beautiful mountain ranges that you're just going up and down and just curving. There's so many twisties and dropping into Eureka was just like, I think that was one of my highlights of the day. It was so beautiful out there. Like it looked like, you said Ireland. Yeah. Like I keep saying it's like Colorado. Like it's the sound of music. <laughs> you're in a scene of sound of music and I just love it. 
Yeah, the Loneliest Highway is definitely underrated because yeah. it looks like a straight line on the map. That's not so. Yeah. Yeah, there's some <laughs> hidden gems in there. Yeah, I definitely have to agree. I think that so far the Loneliest Highway has far exceeded any expectation that I've had for it. Um, and we're not even done. This is, we still have another day. <laughs> I can't ride or drive or visit the Loneliest Highway without stopping at Middlegate Station. Um, they have what's called a monster burger here. I don't know if I'll be able to finish it, but at least I have friends to split it with me. Oh yeah. <laughs> Established in 1860 as a Pony Express station, Middlegate Station is a real deal sagebrush saloon. The entire ceiling of the legendary Middlegate Station is covered in dollar bills, a tradition that dates back to when miners frequented the establishment. And in the kitchen, there lurks a legend, the Middlegate Monster. Wow. The moment I have been waiting for <laughs> on the Loneliest Highway is to order a monster burger here at Middlegate Station. Um, this is ridiculous. I don't even know how else to describe it. It is one, two, I'm gonna guess three or four patties, plus you got a bun, a bun, a bun on the bottom, pickles galore, always gotta have pickles, red onions, lettuce, I mean, all the things on it. And of course, black olives and onion rings and a nose since it's a monster. But this is a thing that this place is known for and people come here and order these and you could do a challenge and try and eat this thing as fast as possible. Um, that is not on my agenda today. <laughs> Me and Kristen and Brandy are gonna be splitting this, but I couldn't come here and not order this. This is like a bucket list thing you have to do on the loneliest highway. So here we are. So we're currently cutting this up and splitting it amongst ourselves and it is just decomposing <laughs> on itself. It's really hard to cut up, but just from the little tidbits that we've been snacking on, it's really good. Did we get even close to finishing that burger? No. <laughs> If three really hungry people came in, yes, y'all could totally finish that burger together. Maybe even two hungry people, but we've been snacking all day, so we finished about two thirds of it. <laughs> Our last stop of the day is Sand Mountain. Who would have ever thought in the middle of nowhere, there's these gigantic dunes. This six story sand dune is one of only a handful of singing sand dunes in the world, reaching 105 decibels at times. While we only heard the sounds of dirt bikes and side-by-sides, it made for a good stopping point as we waited for an epic sunset to end the day. While we've almost reached the end of the loneliest highway, this trip wouldn't be complete without a detour to one of the most famous mining towns in the West, Virginia City. Once known as the richest city in the world for the wealth of gold and silver mined from the Comstock Lode in the 1800s, Virginia City is Nevada's largest and best known historic mining town. In fact, the discovery of the Comstock Lode gave Nevada its nickname, the Silver State. While the search of silver and gold may not be what draws people to this historic town today, the town's well-preserved history and scenic drives to get there make it a perfect day trip destination. There's actually a chili cook-off going on right now um, on the main strip, so they have it all closed down. It smells amazing outside. <laughs> but we're gonna check out a couple things here in, in town. All right, now we just had breakfast at the Canvas Cafe. It's kind of down the hill, I guess, here in Virginia City. Um, we heard they had really good breakfast food and the internet was correct. But it was nice because we parked at the top of the hill. So we walked all the way down, got to see all the historic buildings. And now we're walking back up and checking out some buildings before we get back on the road. This is awesome! The 
wild gals. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's as bad as straight faced as we'll get. Oh my god, Stacy's resting face. I look. 12. I look awkward. No, you, look, you actually look really cool. Look Do I look bad. tough? Yeah. <laughs> Forty-five miles to the west, sitting along the California-Nevada state line, lies the largest alpine lake in North America. Lake Tahoe's clear, iconic blue waters draw millions of tourists a year. In fact, Lake Tahoe is so clear that in some places objects can be seen in depths of over 70 feet. And thanks to recent snowfall from a historic winter, the water is actually the clearest it's been in over 40 years. And while the crystal clear waters may seem enticing to jump into, you'd have to be pretty courageous in mid-May to take a swim, when the surface waters reach, on average, 50 degrees Fahrenheit during the day. How's it feel? Amazing! <laughs> so Highway 50 officially ends here at Lake Tahoe, specifically South Lake Tahoe and State Line. Um, somewhere down that way <laughs> uh, but we are at I want to say this place is called Cave Rock State Park it's on the Nevada side um, so everything over here is California but you can ride a full loop around the lake and there's all kinds of beautiful roads out here that you can also ride in the summer um, they just got record snowfall out here I want to say it's like the heaviest snowfall Tahoe has seen in the last like 30 or 40 years or something crazy so uh, Definitely don't plan a trip earlier than like mid to end of May if you want to come ride roads out here. I want to say even like all the scenic passes like Sonora Pass and whatnot in the Sierras don't even open until like Memorial Day weekend. But when you can ride them, it's really pretty. Roughly 408 miles later, we had officially ridden across the entire state of Nevada via the loneliest road in America, and decided that we hadn't quite done enough sightseeing and spent the next few hours enjoying the scenery around Lake Tahoe. Tahoe was absolutely beautiful. There's a ton of people up there and there was one spot pretty nearby that we wanted to check out. So we headed to Kingsbury Grade, which is also gorgeous. It overlooks this valley down here. Um, very good ride, highly recommend. And we decided to come down to Genoa, Nevada, and it is home to the oldest thirst parlor or bar in Nevada. And this is also the first settlement in the state, which is pretty cool. And this bar is also a really popular motorcycle stop, so there's, I mean, there's bikes everywhere here. <laughs> so we'll go inside and check it out. Since 1853, 11 years before Nevada officially became a state, the Genoa Bar and Saloon has served countless celebrities, politicians, locals, and visitors alike. It even survived prohibition under the guise of being a soda fountain and keeps plenty of its history right on its walls. Even the diamond dust mirror behind the bar is original, which was built in Scotland in the 1840s. You wanna be in the video? I do love that they let dogs in the bar here. <laughs> now there is a food truck here. I'm not sure how often it rotates out, but they currently have burgers and fries. We got some fries, they were pretty good. Nothing too crazy. Well, we're gonna hang out here for a little bit, hang out with some locals, chat. We'll see you guys tomorrow morning for the final day of this adventure. 
Today is our final day touring the Silver State. We got all of our little stamps. So. But before we set out to ride 500 miles back to Las Vegas, we had one thing to do in Carson City. Complete Brandy's Highway 50 survival passport. Brandy's fifth and final stamp in the book in Carson City meant that she had completed the route and could submit the paperwork for the official Highway 50 survivor souvenir and certificate. Downtown Carson City is so cute. Like, I never been here before, so I wasn't sure what to expect, but I wish we had more time to actually hang out in this little town today. But we've got almost 500 miles to do, including a little bit more sightseeing before we are officially done with this trip. <laughs> Today's route takes us along the Free Range Art Highway, where in certain sections, there's no gas for 100 miles. While there's numerous stopping points along the route, we only have time to stop for one quirky roadside attraction. The International Car Force is the largest open-air gallery in Nevada and largest outdoor car exhibit in the country. Over 40 cars are buried here, with some motorcycles at the top of the hill. With monsoons to dodge and a couple hundred miles left to ride until dinner, we didn't stay long. And speaking of dinner, the final foodie stop of this trip is a Las Vegas staple. Our last official stop of this trip is gonna be Evil Pie here in downtown Las Vegas. Evil Pie, an Evil Knievel themed pizza joint that serves quirky named pizzas by the slice. After a full day of riding, we were more than ready to stuff ourselves with pizza. This one, the Hog Heaven, was definitely my favorite. We have officially made it back to Eagle Rider here in Las Vegas. What a rad couple of days exploring Nell's home state. Yeah. Nevada completely blew my mind. There's so much to see here outside of Las Vegas and you can easily just rent a bike from Eagle Rider and just do a giant loop around the state in four days. We did what? Like 13 or 1400 miles over the last? Yeah, about 1500. Four actually. days? Okay, yeah, yeah, 1500. Someone was keeping count, it wasn't me. <laughs> but it was just, absolutely gorgeous even yesterday when we had to do a 500 mile day um, we didn't have a lot of time to film and show you guys everything but that was a beautiful ride down the 95 it was absolutely gorgeous and of course they took me to evil pie last night which is thinking you have to do if you come to las vegas uh, very good pizza if you're a pizza person if you got all the way to the end of this video thank you so much for watching the whole thing be sure to follow brandy and Kristen on daughters of the road i will link their youtube channel up here they do a podcast featuring all types of women in power sports it's really really cool i also have done one as well and that will be linked here too but until then i'll see y'all on the road later y'all <laughs>